My entire life shifted and changed and up-leveled so dramatically after I made a really hard choice around a certain person in my life. And somebody asked about it. And so I'm up now to share that story with you. Some of you know it. Many of you don't. Hey, Rita. How are you guys doing? Um, so I grew up, and you know, I find that it's relationships that started in our childhood, in those formative years where things are just fusing together and our belief systems are starting to click into place and, and we're shifting and we're changing. And it's the people that we meet at that point or the people in our lives at that point that we tend to want to stay connected to for the rest of our lives. We think that we should. We think that it's important, but these are the people who also are going to change the most because they haven't lived their lives, you know, and you haven't lived your lives. And so I had a friend that I met in high school and she was really cool. She's a popular girl in high school, whereas I was not, I was the Jesus girl. I walked around the campus with my Bible and I was real ready to tell y'all about Jesus if you wanted to know even a little bit. <laughs> and so I was kind of a nerd, but my brother was... It was, I think, a 2,000-member school. He was top three most popular people in that school. And we were only 18 months apart. And so um, I was able to go to school, high school, with my brother for two out of the four years. And because of that, I kind of knew people by proxy. Do you know what I mean? Because my brother was so popular, people knew who I was, even though I was, a, like, a severe nerd and into Jesus all the way, for real. And all the, like, cheerleaders and pretty girls – wanted to be my friend, but only so they could just get to know my brother. My brother is like the only blonde in my whole family. He's like an Adonis. He's been beautiful his entire life. And in the 80s, you know, we did the feather, right? He had these wings on the side of his head and this long blonde hair. And, oh, girl, all the ladies love my brother. And so, you know, I, I had friends, but they weren't really friends until about my senior year when I met this one girl. And she had a crush on my brother, like they all did, but she also got to know me, and as we spent time together, it became so apparent that we gelled. We were, we had the same sense of humor. We also were both Christians at the time, and she was part of my church, but she was also irreverent, and she liked to smoke weed, and so did I. Like, there was all kinds of different things going on at the time, but we connected on a, diff a lot of different levels, and from that moment on, we just stayed in each other's lives, and, and we grew, we got married, we got divorced together, we held each other's space for that, we always supported one another, no matter what, and I considered her to be like my sister, in fact, she was the person who did the ceremony when my father died, she was there by my side, scattering his ashes out at Makapu'u Point, and we just have a long and storied history, but because she had been so ingrained in my life, I never thought to really question whether it was a healthy connection. We had just always been together. She was always my ride or die. And so I never thought about it. But as I began to grow spiritually more and more, I've, I've been spiritual all my life, so is she. But as I began to really start to take my own journey with spirituality, I had you have to do the work. I talk about this so often in our classes. Like you, If you want to be psychic, if you want to be spiritually connected, if you want to receive spirit messaging, if you want to know what your intuition is saying to you, what God is saying to you, you have to work on your psychological stuff. you got to get in there. you got to get into the patterns, the beliefs, and those things that are holding you back, those scripts that are endlessly running in the background of your mind, these are the things that you say to yourself about yourself and about other people and about life in general. You have to get into that stuff because that's where you're, you're holding dead weight. That's where your baggage, energetically speaking, actually lives, and you have to unpack it. And in order to do that, you have to take hard looks at yourself at various points in your life. And at a point in my life, I did something called a relationship review. Now, I talked about the relationship with you in Everything Psychic, so some of you have heard about it, but I took it really seriously, and for the first time, I included this person in my relationship review, because all I wanted to do, I, I, I changed the way I looked at the relationships. Instead of looking at the people that I thought I was closest to, I looked at the minutes involved. How many minutes was I actually spending with who? Who was taking up most of my time, and what was the quality of their energy? 
And as I started logging the minutes, I noticed, yo, this girl, this friend, this ride or die, she's taking up a lot of minutes. She's taking up lots of minutes. I mean, we're talking hours a day and, and like hours and hours and hours and hours a week. And the next step in a relationship review, once you've got maybe your top five people who are taking, who you are giving, let's just rephrase that. This is always a choice. You are giving your time to. Once you figure out who those five people are, no matter whether you feel close to them or not, then you've got to start running through each person and examining the energy. And there's a lot of ways we can do this. We can do this through body dousing by just saying the name and allowing the body instrument to speak to us and say, yes or no. The body is always going to answer. And for me, when the body says, yes, this is a match, this is good, I feel a quickening. I feel this kind of accelerated energy, typically in the area of my chest, also in the area of my throat. It feels good, though, and that's what you want to pay attention to. And a no for me typically happens in the area of my gut. Like, I'll feel sick. I'll feel a knot in my stomach. I'll feel um, literal nausea, but sometimes it's also in my chest. I'll feel a constricting in my chest. Sometimes it's in my throat. My voice will actually get weak. My body will say, no, this is not a match. And so as I am going through my five people, and this chick's on the list, I get to her name. I see how many minutes she's actually taking. And then I, with neutrality, which is so important, right? I sit there I say her name out loud. Well, actually, I say it about three times, super neutral, all in the receiver position. And I wait. And I am stunned when I feel the in my throat. I don't know how to describe it. This tightening in my throat. I am stunned when I feel like there's a hand on my chest. Anyway, I was amazed and stunned when I got my classic no. And so that was just an invitation. You know, if I was willing to accept what spirit had to say to me, it was an invitation for me to go deeper and start looking at other areas. Why would spirit be saying no about my ride or die homie from high school? What? This person's spiritual. Why would spirit be saying no? And I got brave. I got courageous enough to really start looking. And I started noticing things. Oh, you know. Every time something good happens in my life, this person says that's great, but very quickly hijacks the conversation and makes it about what she doesn't have or how what she does have is better than what I just achieved. Check. Notice that. I also noticed how in conversations, and we had conversations that went on for hours, I would literally, not joking, I would get 10 minutes out of two hours. I'd get maybe 15 minutes out of three hours. It wasn't about me. There was no energetic reciprocity that was happening. It was always about what was happening in this person's life, the things that this person was realizing. And it was usually, quite honestly, a hardship. Lots of drama. Lots of drama. This person did this to me, or this injustice is happening to me. Lots of negative, swirling energy. And that was another thing about this person. She was not necessarily balanced, but she had strong energy, and so many negative people do, and we don't pay attention to it because we just, they're usually close to us, and we don't want to admit it, but when we start paying attention to it and reading that energy, we'll notice it's super strong. In fact, it was overwhelming, and when she would go into her drama moments, it was like, oh my, it was like a tidal wave washing over me, and it was draining me. It was like... It was like a parasite, honestly, and I hate to say that about anybody, and I know it was not her intention to be this, but it didn't change the fact, right, that it was that. And at the end of the day, I was being drained. I would walk away from a three-hour conversation unable to do anything else for the rest of the day. That's it. I was over because I had held the bucket for her, if you will. You know, in relationships, that what we, that's what we do. We hold space and consider that space a bucket. I would hold that bucket and she would just pour her stuff into that bucket and it would get heavier and it would get heavier. And then when she was done, she'd walk away. And I was always left, though, holding this heavy freaking bucket. And I'd have to figure out how, how do I let this go? How do I dump this out? How do I release the energy that she's just put on me? And that was hard. That actually takes a lot of uh, skill to energetically purge that way. And I wasn't even trying to because I never even thought I needed to until I started doing the relationship 
review. So needless to say, the first thing I tried to do with this girl, because I wanted to salvage the relationship badly, because again, since high school, this girl had been my best friend forever. The first thing I tried to do was to create boundaries and to say, hey, you know what? This doesn't feel equal to me. I don't feel like I'm in this relationship to the degree that you're in this relationship and you get to talk about all your stuff and that's cool. I want to hear about it, but there needs to be equal time for me. That's how relationships work. I was super diplomatic about it. You guys know me. I'm not a mean person. I'm, I'm here. I love people. I'm just ET phoning home, but she did not like it. Didn't matter how nicely I put it, how diplomatic I was. She was like, well, what are you saying? And got real upset about it and did not like the boundary that I was attempting to put into place. And then in short order, because this is how spirit works. As soon as we say yes, spirit's like, word, I am right here. We're doing it. And this is what spirit did. As soon as I said yes, and I started to take some action based on the information that spirit had given me, so this for me was making a boundary, other things started to reveal themselves. Very quickly, within a series of six months, this girl did three things that were completely out of integrity, wildly out of integrity, things that put my family at risk, things that I could not look away from. And I had to call her out on. And if you think me just trying to put in a, reasonable boundary was an issue for her oh hell when i called her on her bullshit then things got absolutely crazy long story short she ended up saying i just don't feel like we're in the same place anymore i just don't feel like we need to be in each other's lives anymore and she dumped me and this is where we were going naturally but i was still surprised that she did that i was surprised that instead of finding ways to you know introduce reciprocity, equality in the relationship, finding ways to not act out of integrity or to explain herself, like finding conditions under which we could thrive. I was shocked that she would just say, you know what? Fuck you. I'm out of here. I don't need you in my life. Shocked. I wept. Boy, did I cry. But I am so grateful. I am so grateful. And do you know that within just one year, my life, just as Oprah was talking about, and just as I've heard many of you talk about, when I, when spirit really made the decision for me, all I really did was try to enforce a boundary and then everything fell into place. But as soon as I did that and she was out of my life, everything shifted. I up leveled massively, started my own business, started, had a lot of clients. Those clients grew so very quickly. I had clients all over the world. And then I said, you know what? I don't really want to read. I want to teach. And so I started teaching and putting together classes and I had students all over the world and Things just began to come together, and they continue to up-level, and I am continuing to thrive. Now, do I have a lot of friends? No. The closest friends that I have are my husband, my daughter, and you guys, honestly. The, the few of you that I actually really interact with, I consider you guys to be friends, but I don't really have a lot of friends. Hello, I'm 49 years old. I've seen a lot of people come and go, and sometimes it's a lot better when they go. And it's important that we get brave enough to do at least a rudimentary, basic relationship review. Write down the names of the people with whom you spend the more time. It's not about who you feel closest to. It's not about who you, who you should feel close to. Oh, my sibling, my mate, my mom, my dad. It's about minutes. Who's got your minutes? Who are you sharing your time and your energy with? Who's getting the benefit of that? And do they appreciate it? Once you have five names, the five people who are getting most of your minutes, then you start going through those names and you do what I did. You ask your body to tell you. You get your pendulum out. You pray about it. You ask for the answer, but you also look for it. Remember, we miss 90% of everything spirit says because we're not paying attention to the environment. That's where spirit talks to us is in the environment. If you ask a question, 100% you're going to receive it, especially if it's in alignment with your source. Your, your calling, your purpose. If it's in alignment with source, spirit is going to answer. But you're going to miss it if all you do is ask and then just ask, expect an angel to appear at the foot of your bed. Behold, the answer is yes. No, that's not how it works. It's introduced in your environment through patterns and sequences and through dreams and through epiphanies and downloads. That's how spirit works. But if you ask spirit will tell you and it's usually your body honestly 
It's usually your physical body will make you feel sick, make you feel tense, if it's a no. And if it's a yes, if this person is a beautiful match for you, you don't have to know why, they just are. If they're a compliment and a blessing to you, you'll feel that too, it'll feel good. There'll be a rush of energy, you'll feel a tingle, you'll feel something, but it'll be good. But you have to get brave enough to ask. Again, once you do, once you start weeding the garden of your life and removing those forces that you know, and so many of us know, don't we? Removing those forces that are doing damage to you, whether that's your husband or your wife, your child, your mom, your dad, whether it's in your place of work, wherever these people are, you know that they're doing damage to you. At least be brave enough to ask the question, and then when spirit answers, do something about it. Spirit will make the way. Spirit did that for me. All I did was ask. All I did was get the validation. All I did was take one action step. Spirit did the rest, and it resolved itself very quickly. And now here I am.